Would you pray with me? Almighty God, on this blessed Sunday, we've already been blessed beyond measure by our wonderful choir. Inspire us, oh God, not just to hear your words, but to live out your words. Let church really be in us. May the words that I speak bring you praise, Lord, and never, never shame. Enlighten our minds, soften our hearts, unite us, that we might be willing workers in your vineyard. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So for this blessed morning, the best of the best. One of the highlights of my college life was in 1970, the temptations came to our college campus. And I had a chance to interview Melvin Franklin. I was fascinated by his depth, his knowledge, and his passion, and his willingness to sit down and talk to a college student. But asked him, what's the best advice you could give the students here, especially the Black students? And he said, you need to be the best of the best. Now, don't just be the best, be the best of the best. And I said, well, how do you do that? He said, you give it not 100%, you give it 200%. You work days and nights, you, you, you hone your craft, you, you, you get it right. And he said, along the way, for every bit of advice you get, every gift you get, everything you get, you pass it on. The way you be the best of the best is you pass it on, be generous and be kind. A year later, I had a chance to interview Julian Bond. And he basically said, basically said Julian Bond, a civil rights activist from Atlanta, Georgia. He basically said the same thing. I was just mesmerized by the wisdom. Be generous and be kind work hard. The gospel lesson is a lesson about generosity. It's a lesson about what God expects from us because he gave his all. He expects us to be generous. He expects us to be kind. And how do we do that? We do that by everyday living. We do that by asking the right questions. We do that by saying, we live in a community and all the resources that we have, all our resources together make the kingdom better. They don't belong to me, my thousand acres of land. It doesn't really belong to me. My 8,000 square foot house doesn't belong to me. This is community stuff. God has entrusted me as a caretaker, as a steward. It's community stuff, so what? At the end of the day, what will people say I did with my resources? What will people say about me? As the Bible talks about generosity and talks about using what you have, it says you don't have to be rich, rich, poor, black, white, green or yellow, wherever you are, you have resources that are mandated for kingdom building. You have resources that are mandated to help people learn about God. And as they learn about God, they're able to praise God on a constant basis. Praising God is not a part-time deal. Praising God is a day by day, 24-7, God built, created us to praise him, to praise him. And we praise him by being generous with one another, by being kind to one another. And every time we talk about generosity, we clam up because people think we're talking about money. Fooey, as they say. If you have a generous heart, you're not worried about money. A generous heart says that you're concerned about the, ch the child with, who goes to school with holes in his gym shoes. Having a generous heart means that you, you're concerned about Miss Mary, whose roof is, roof, roof is leaking. It says you're concerned about Brother Bob who can't get to the doctor. It's being kind, it just simply means that you open your eyes and, and being generous means that you use your resources, not just for you, but for making mankind, making humankind better. And more than anything, you do it with a joyful heart. If you resent doing it, don't do it. If you resent doing it, pray that God will give you the strength and the power to do it because you are glad to do it. Nobody should have to beg you to be generous. Nobody should have to beg you to be kind because the gospel implicitly says, take your resources, use what you got, make the world a, create the, make the world a better place. And as you have your resources, challenge resources that are misplaced. There's no excuse in our world today for the average pair of gym shoes to cost $100 and the cool ones to cost two or $300, there's no excuse. When it costs about $5 to make them, 
We don't challenge systems that say, why, why do you put poor kids in this situation? Why do you put poor kids in a situation they have to rob and steal or kill or hurt? We've enticed them, we've taught them, we've socialized them that they gotta have them. If the parents can't buy them, they'll get them some kind of way. The world shouldn't be like that. Generosity says to us that yes, we have children, buy gym shoes, but we have systems say that we can't create a system where things are out of reach for people. God calls us into account and he says to us, what Melvin Franklin says, you got to be the best of the best. You can't be ordinary. As a Christian, you got to be the best of the best. That doesn't mean your name is in lights or on billboards. It doesn't mean that you are famous. It doesn't mean that, that people bow down to you. It simply means that you take what you got and you did the best with what you had and you use it for humankind. You used it to make the world, you used it to create heaven on earth. You use it to make a difference. It makes no sense for systems to be out of whack. And those of us who have don't see the have nots. I am convinced today that the greatest threat to humankind is not COVID, not heart disease. It is not cancer, two great diseases prosperitis and meitis. Two words I want Urban Dictionary, I'm on coin. Prosperitis and meitis. So much pro prosperity means that I just ooh it all. Or with the things God allows me to do, I just ooh and all about my achievements, about my stuff, about my status. All that I have. Meida says it is about me. You can't be the best of the best saying it's always about me. When it's about me, I laugh about buying a $600 purse and won't spend $5 to put $5 in the Salvation Army kettle. Meitis. Meitis says that I can talk about buying a Beamer or, or a hundred. $80,000, I can, as a pastor, I can ride around in a Rolls Royce or, or, or something and then drive by the homeless. That's me -itis. I'm concerned about my status. I'm more concerned about the wall, my wallpaper and the paint on my church than I am about letting kids come in because they might get stains on the carpet. They might get stains on the floor. They might mess up my kitchen, might mess up my house, might mess up my church. If you don't have children in your church, your church is already messed up. If you don't have the homeless in your church, it's already messed up. Miata says it's constantly about me. And Miata says for the being about me, I justify it. I, I earn this. I studied to get where I am. I earn this and what I do with mine is my business. Well, there come a day when you will stand before God and I want you to tell almighty God, that what you wasted your resources on is your business. If you're that big and bad, I want to meet you. Prosperitis, meitis, says that I have left the kingdom trail and my trail goes down the trail of my own personal gain. Melvin Franklin and Julian Bond said, and others who, who know the world, well, this ain't about what we're about. You don't find joy in just taking and grabbing. You find joy in giving yourself away. Everybody that, I, that I've had the, had, the, had, the, had the privilege to funeralize, the great majority of them gave themselves away. It's a blessing to say that most of the people you buried were people who gave themselves away. Now, that was some I have to admit they didn't. But it gives me hope to know that, that, that our singers and the people who are leaving here have paved and show, are showing us the way. We just got to follow. Me, Idas, Prosperitis. Are you generous? Are we teaching the church to be generous? Are you teaching your children to be generous? My granddaughter gets so tired of Cynthia saying, give some away. Save some and give some away. Why does she teach her that? Because that's what she was taught. That's her legacy. 
her grandfather, her mother, her father spent their lives giving themselves away. Her mother would get up on Saturday mornings and take other women to the washerette because none of them had washers and dryers in their homes. They spent all day long at the washerette. They couldn't drive, didn't have cars. She would take them every Saturday. And I thought, is she crazy? Spend some time, watch cartoons. Uh, eat cake, do something for yourself on Saturday. But every Saturday morning, I watched that woman and she was she was able to get herself a wash and dry in her house and her friends were able to get them. She, I watched her do that joyfully and gleefully. And I watched her meet the needs of her community. I watched her dad do the same thing. What a blessing it is in smaller communities where you see the generosity of people when I can't get my crops in. Guess what? You helped me when my roof is leaking. You helped me. Where have we gone wrong? Where have we lost it? Generosity. Every church ought to be known for its generosity. Its doors are open when people are freezing. Its doors are open when people are hungry. Its doors are open when people need, need clothes. But more importantly, it's the doors open when people are hurting emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Come on in. The ushers are jumping them down and dancing. Come on in, y'all. Children are running to them and hugging them. Come on in, y'all. The folk in the church are saying to them, this is a place where you can be loved by all of us. And none of us are beyond loving you. None of us are the quality folk who rank you. None of us are the folk who put you down. None of us are the folk who say no. We are generous people. We give of ourselves. We give to life. We give to love. We give to laughter. We, we just give. And if we can create people with the DNA to be constantly giving, I got members at Centenary who get up on the weekends and through the week taking food to members who, 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 who are living alone and taking food to, to other folk and taking people driving, buying groceries and, 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 and driving people to the doctor. I got no, I got folk who do that. They don't brag about it, but people tell me, guess what brother so-and-so did? Guess what sister so-and-so did? That is a great thing to know. You got folk who live it out. But what I ask and what every preacher in the country is asking, we need more, <laughs> more not, not more money, more, not more money, more people, more people. We need more folk. On the battlefield, we need more folk who are consistent. We need more folk who say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I'm generous with my spirit. I'm generous with my love. I'm generous with my talent. I'm giving it, Lord. I'm giving myself away. I am the best of the best. I have people at Central Centenary who are the best of the best. I need more. First Church has people who are the best of the best. They need more. The best Pentecostal church, the Presbyterian church, we all need more. And how do we get more? We shape and mold more folk. We help more people understand what it means to be the best of the best. And I promise you, when you know that you're the best of the best, you know that you're not perfect, number one. You know that there'll be days when you still cuss, number one. There'll be days when you still fuss. But most of those days, most of those days, you will find yourself walking with the master, talking with the master, saying, Lord, what else can I do? And then your prayer will be, Lord, when I come to the end of my journey, knowing that my race has been won, Lord, I just need to hear you say, Johnny, you've done the best you could. I need to hear you say, Roger, you've done the best you could. I know you need to hear you say, Glennette, you just done the best you could. You aren't always right. You aren't always on track. But you, but when you when you slip off, you got back on. You kept on marching. You kept on marching. When the world knocked you down, you let me pick you up, and you kept on marching. When you when you when your heart was broken, you didn't blame me. You didn't get bitter. You kept on marching. When the world wasn't like you wanted it, you didn't blame the world. You just kept on doing what you could do, and that's okay. And at the end. God wants to, you want to hear God say, son, you kept it positive. You kept it positive. And when you're able to say that you kept it positive, you kept it right, then everything goes okay. 
at the end of the day, you need to be able to say, Lord, I gave myself away. You know, your moms and dads have gone on the, on the glory. They had a legacy of giving themselves away. You know, friends who died young, who gave themselves away. We have a rich legacy that goes back as people of color, that goes back centuries of giving ourselves away. What blocks us today? The world keeps telling us, get all you can, grab all you can, hold on to all you can. That ain't the gospel. And sometimes we listen to prosperity preachers and theologians. The, the cathedrals are filled with thousands and thousands of people who want to hear the prosperity gospel. God is going to bless you with stuff. There's nothing in the, in, in the Bible that talks about us just relying on stuff. But there is something in the Bible that talks about us relying on love. That full letter word, love, can sustain us through good times, through drought, through floods, through COVID, through anything. It's love. Understanding what agape love means, it means that I love you unconditionally. It means you ain't got to do nothing for it. It means even with your mean, evil self, I love you. Even with your cheap self, I love you. Even with your indifferent self, I still love you. We love you anyway. We're not trying to fix you. We're not trying to change you. We just need to know that we love you. And I promise you, if you understand love, it makes you generous. It makes you generous with your time. It makes you generous with your money. It makes you generous with your relationships. Your arms are wide open and you're waiting for, to hold somebody's baby. Your arms are wide open. You're, you, you, you're waiting to hold the sick and the infirm. Your arms are wide open and you're waiting to hold somebody who just doesn't have any faith anymore. You're, you're, you're there. You're willing. You're waiting. You're saying, I don't have all the answers, but I know a Jesus who will make a way out of no way. I don't have all the answers, but I know a Jesus who can heal you. I don't have all the answers, but I know a Jesus who can fix this. I can't fix it, but I know a Jesus who can fix it. And when we stop trying to fix people and just love on them, it makes a radical difference. You've heard me share the story of, of my hometown, Savannah, Tennessee, that right on the Tennessee River where so many people that I know, so many people have drowned on that river. And one fourth of July, family was celebrating, too many on the boat, they were drinking. The boat went down and, and when the rescue team got there, only one, one little girl was left alive. Can you imagine the trauma of watching all your family members drown? There's nothing you can do about it. She was the only one with the life vest on. On the whole, they had plenty of life vests there. The adults, none of them had, a, and older children, none of them had a life vest on. And when they pulled the child out of the water, she was so traumatized that she didn't speak for days. And the nurses loved on her, and they, they just prayed with her. And they noticed that she had this ragged teddy bear, water-soaked teddy bear, and she wouldn't let it go. And the stuffing was coming out of it. So finally, one day when one of the nurses said, "Hun, let me take your bear. I'll fix him for you. And for the first time, the little girl looked, her, uh, looked up and spoke. And she said, ma'am, he don't need no fixing. He just needs some loving. There's so many people out there that don't need no fixing. They just need some loving. They don't need no judgment. They just need some loving. They don't need anybody to say why you're in this condition. They just need some loving. And if you're willing to love people unconditionally, like our master, our Lord and Savior did Christ, if you're willing to love people unconditionally, give yourself away, then at the end of your journey, I am sure and very sure you will hear the words, well done, well done, thy good and faithful servants. You will make memories, you will make hope, you will bring joy. And at the end of the day, you will be cured of prosperitis and meitis. Because the cure is in the gospel. The cure is in the word of God. And if you wanna be cured, if you like the state you're in, if it's about me, then I pray that the Lord will fix you, I can't. If it's about your own prosperity, I pray the Lord will fix you. I can't. But if the, you hear and listen to the word of God, it says, and in the text, it talks about using you, 
The main resource you got is you, your mind, your thoughts, your, your heart, using you to make the world better. And if you use you, everything that you got will follow. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord, your God, we are filled with the world. Neatis and Prosperitis attacking us in every corner of the globe. We want what we want. And we, and we justify excess and waste. We justify not giving ourselves away. But the word is clear. You can't change it, you can't alter it. You have given it to us, so be it. Help us, oh God, in all the ways that we need to be helped in learning of you. For those who are listening, those on YouTube, you know that you can contact us and say, I have said to the Lord, Lord, forgive me of my sins, come into my life, so be it. I want to follow you, I, don't, I want to rely on you. Our church can give you help with that, or any church open in the name of our Lord and Savior. Call us, I call them. Those who are be with, will be with us during glorious sightings, the same is true. We just give thanks to God in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.